everybody, Justin here, here to review Season 2 of Code Geass. But before I get on to my review, um, I have to say that if you have not watched Season 1 of Code Geass right now, push the stop button now, because there will be spoilers from Season 1 of Code Geass, and there may be a little spoilers of Season 2 in this review. So, um, you know, if you haven't watched it, push stop and watch Season 1 of Code Geass right now! Okay, if you haven't pushed stop already, now it's time to move on to my review. Despite the heavy-ass um, cliffhanger that Season 1 ends at, the series picks up not where it leaves off, oh, sorry for my aim, but a year after those events. Yes, judging by the DVD cover and the promotional pictures, um, Lelouch and Suzaku do survive their bizarre final encounter in Season 1. And after some crazy circumstances, Lelouch is back at zero and reassembles his Black Knights and resumes his quest to overthrow his father. Compared to Season 1, this installment is more fast-paced since the major players have already been established. But despite that, the established characters are still given more development, and new characters are thrown into the mix that do offer their own contribution and are given their own development as well. A lot of the situations in the series does play homage to Season 1, but adds its own unique twist to it for shits and giggles. Um, what I liked about um, this series is that Lelouch is more vulnerable in comparison to Season 1, and I like how the series exploits that at the right moments, and I always anticipated how he would handle that, and that factor was what really drove me in watching this series even more. And the narrative and themes from of uh, this season, the way it plays out really reminds me of Metal Gear Solid 3, 4, and Portable Ops. If you've played those games and have watched this series, then you pretty much have an idea of what I'm talking about. The story talks about how one defines loyalty, patriotism, duty, honor, and, you know, all that other stuff. As for the philosophy, it kind of goes on an opposite take of the philosophy from Legend of Galactic Heroes, which I have been watching. And as for when I'll review that, I don't know yet. And Young, one of the characters from that respective series, has this quote, and it goes like this. There are few wars between good and evil. Most are between one good and another good. What I felt with this series, Lelouch's philosophy is that war is between, you know, one evil against another. And the message Lelouch uses in this season really goes very extreme. And as for the ending, it will take you by surprise. The director has talked about it's up to the viewer how to interpret it emotionally, and um, I felt the ending reflects what I thought about what the main theme of this installment was. And as for what I think that theme is, um, it would give an indication of how the anime would end, and, you know, it would indicate spoilers. But if you're interested in what I think about it, um, feel, feel, please feel free to leave a comment. However, I do feel that some problems that some people may find trivial, um, but I find these factors kind of what felt the series was, you know, a little incomplete. What I am ta about to mention will be spoilers, so um, try to skip this part if possible. One of the, the things that got to me is that the series ends where we really don't learn C2's real name. And I thought we would learn it during a certain moment in the series, if you know what I'm talking about, but I'm surprised they never exploited that during that duration of the series. Yes, we do get to learn about C2's past, but I think it would have been interesting to learn what her real name is and what, you know, what the significance of what, you know, C2 means. And despite what we learn about V2 this season, and we do learn a significant amount about him, but I still think his character was still a bit obscure here and there for a variety of reasons in my opinion. But other than that, I think the story was still conclusive, but still had some holes. And those holes are why I can't give the story and characters a 10 out of 10. Instead, I'm giving it a 9.45 out of 10. As for the quality of the animation this season, it may be just me, but I thought the resolution and the coloring looked much better compared to last season. I thought the colors were more washed out, and I have watched this series on an HD TV in some stores in Japan, and it looks very, 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 very amazing. I thought there, were more, there was more detail to the hair and the eyes, and the clothing was still very representative of Clamp's art style. And, um, what I also liked about this series was that, you know, both ending themes featured the characters in Clamp's more traditional art style, as I mentioned in my review of Season 1, though I wish the character designs in the series more directly reflected, reflected that style as the X and Magic Knight Ray Earth TV series did. You know, just times the quality of Season 1 by 2 and you get Season 2. The mech battles are more aerial-oriented as opposed to ground-oriented, so it's more fast-paced and brings a different kind of excitement. 
Plus, there's a lot more mech action this season, so it might be a hit or miss for some people, especially for those, you know, who kind of appreciate this series outside the mech um, elements. Most of the mechs from Season 1 are back, and I got nothing much to add about those, but the Tristan, um, one of the new mechs this season, reminds me a lot of the old-school Super Robot design, so that's pretty cool. But I felt at times that Suzaku's Gios, um, you know, what the Gios um, casted upon him in Season 1, kind of gave him too much of a new type-like power, as opposed to being strategic, and that's the only flaw I can point out with the action. So nothing much to say in the art and animation, but give it a 9.25 out of 10. Well, pretty much the background music used in Season 1 is used here again, and I already, and what I said about that can already be said in this review, so, um, you know, I can skip that part. And surprisingly, the first and second op and the first and the first opening and ending themes were done by Orange Range, and outside of this series, my only exposure to their songs have been through Naruto and Bleach. And they give a different kind of style and intensity to the music of this series that reflects the atmosphere of Code Geass more. The second ending theme is pretty much a lot like the first ending theme from Season 1. So the music from the first season is pretty much the same, but the opening and ending themes are a whole lot better. The voice acting I really don't have much to add except one of the best male seiyus of all time, Midori Kawa Hikaru, um, playing the voice of Shinka, who reminds me of a more serious Tamahome from Fushigi Yugi. And if you don't know who he is, then you're not a true anime fan. And his presence alone, and, um, you know, of course, the better quality of the music, uh, mostly pertaining to the opening and ending themes, is why I'm giving the music and voice acting a 10 out of 10. And I have to say that this is certainly one of the best second season animes I have ever watched. Um, you know, a lot of seasons, too, have kind of been disappointing, such as, you know, Gundam Seed Destiny, or, you know, don't continue where they should be continuing, like, you know, Hajime no Ippo New Challenger. And I say despite some of its flaws, I really enjoy this series and where it really counted. And for that, I give it an overall score of a 9.5 out of 10.